What do you do when somebody hurts you over and over again and uh, the pain that you feel hurts more than the love that you experience when they love you? Well, that's easy, Brother Klaus. God said we're supposed to forgive. <laughs> yes. The Bible does instruct us to forgive, but is it really that easy? And what is forgiveness anyway? What does forgiveness look like? What does that mean for me to forgive somebody? This is a topic that can touch on a lot of sensitive issues. And some of you going here, this may expose a place that's hurt, probably maybe still throbbing with pain. It's an uncomfortable place to go to, and today I want to talk about forgiveness. I want to talk about being offended, being trespassed against, and being wounded. I think the um, best place to go here first is to see what the Bible says about the subject. Now, I don't have all the answers. I'm not doing this to propose to you that I have all the answers. I don't think that I have all the answers. I'm not sure if I have most of the answers concerning this topic. I don't know if there is any human being alive that does have all the answers. What I see is, you know what, let's get together and let's speculate about this. I could be wrong, however. There may be somebody out there that has a clear-cut answer to the question of what is forgiveness and how do I do it? If you're out there, I want to invite you to a conversation with me. I am looking for deeper knowledge. I'm looking for greater understanding. I'm looking for truth always. And uh, feel free to hit me up. Now, back to the Bible. What does the scripture say? Luke chapter 17 verses 3 through 5 is a place where I want to begin. And the Bible reads, Take heed to yourselves. Pay attention to you. Check yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. Or sister, if your sister trespasses against you, rebuke her. And if he repent, forgive him or she. If he repent, forgive him. If your brother trespasses against you, rebuke him. This thing has, a, there's a part for us to play in this. If someone trespasses against you, if someone does something to offend you, or hurt your heart, or injure you, damage your feelings in any kind of way, if they transgress your boundaries, or come against you in some kind of way that leaves you not sitting right with them, your job and my job is supposed to rebuke them. Now, what does that mean? When I first heard the word rebuke, I always thought that this is what rebuke looks like. I rebuke you. <laughs> right. Like some kind of special move in a street fight. You know what I mean? I don't know. That was my impression. But that's not what rebuke means. In this sense, rebuke simply means to inform the other person of what has transpired. We are responsible to let them know, listen, you've hurt me. What you've done has hurt me. What you said has hurt me. It doesn't matter if they hurt you with the intent to hurt you. It doesn't matter if they didn't know that they hurt you. If you were hurt by something, it doesn't matter how sensitive you are. It doesn't matter how, how prone you are to, to being hurt. It doesn't matter if you've got soft skin, if you're not thick skin. That doesn't matter. If you were hurt 
by somebody that said something to you or did something to you or if you were offended by something that somebody said or somebody did, that hurt is genuine to you. You need to bring awareness to that. Let the person know, hey, listen, when you said so and so and such and such, that hurt me. You don't have to know why it hurts you. You don't have to understand why it hurt you. You don't have to be able to explain yourself why that hurt you. If it hurt you, it hurt you. And there, has, there doesn't need to be an explanation. But our part, our responsibility for the injured party is to come to the brother or sister that hurt us, the Bible calls it a trespass, and bring it to their awareness. Say, hey, listen, brother, or hey, listen, sis, when you said that to me, it hurt me. I don't know if you meant it like that. I don't know what the intention was, but on my end, my receiving end, it hurt me. And it left me feeling some kind of way. And if they respond and say, oh, man, you know what? I had no idea that I hurt you. I had no idea that that impacted you that way. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. The Bible says forgive them if they repent. And if this happens seven times, hey, bro, man, you know what? Coming to you again, when, when you did that, that also hurt me. And the brother responds, you know what? I have a tendency to do that. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry that I hurt you. Forgive me. Scripture demands that we forgive. And so we should. Hey, I forgive you. Jesus said, or the apostle said, hey, if they trespass seven times, Jesus said not seven times, not seven times, but 70 times seven. If they do it all day long, you're supposed to rebuke them all day long. And if they repent, you are required to forgive them. Well, what if they don't repent? What does the Bible say? If they repent, forgive them. If they don't repent, does the Bible say forgive them? Jesus said, if they repent, which implies if they don't repent, how can you forgive them? Now, I've practiced that before, too. They didn't ask forgive. They didn't repent, nothing, but I had to let it go. I don't know if that's the same thing, letting go and forgiving. I don't know if there's two different things because you can't forgive somebody if they don't repent is what it seems like the scripture is saying here. So it's got to it's got to be something else from what I see. But anyways, if they repent, forgive them. Now, what about the difficult part? What if they what if they don't repent? What if they fight you? What if they get offended? What if you come to them and say, "Hey, listen, what you said to me, yo, that that hurt my feelings, man. That's that wasn't cool." But like, "Oh yeah, well, I don't care." And now the fire has been kindled in your heart. And if it burns hot enough, it will bring you to a place that you begin to bypass all logic and all reasoning and nothing but fire consumes you and you begin to move in fire. And it's not Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> this is not a good fire. Well, if they don't repent... If, if, if they don't receive the rebuke, they're not going to repent, most likely. Well, that leaves you in an awkward place. Now you're injured and wounded, and the party that did it to you doesn't acknowledge that they've hurt you. They dismiss it, like, oh, I ain't mean to, I ain't do that. I ain't trying to hurt you. And they just dismiss it. Well, that might be fine with them, but guess who's left feeling salty? Guess who's left wounded? Guess whose heart is throbbing and hurting? You. What do you do there? Well, I know a few principles from the scripture that says, cast your care on Jesus. I've said that before several times. Different situations. Same principle applies. Go and tell your father. 
Go and tell daddy. If somebody offends you, somebody hurts your feelings and you do what the Bible says and you rebuke them, go and tell your dad. Be like, hey, and explain the situation to him. I, now, I say do that. Some people say, well, God knows how I feel. I don't have to. Well, that's true. God knows how you feel. But doesn't that defeat the purpose of relationship? Isn't relationship founded on communication or resting on communication? So speak to your father. Don't be okay with, oh, well, God knows what happened. Yeah, he does. But why don't you tell him for the sake of your own heart? Why don't you explain in every detail that your heart can foster what you experienced and tell your heavenly father? Because in doing that, you are releasing it. You ever heard somebody say, brother, just let it go. Just let go and let God. <laughs> You've heard that before, I'm sure. If not, you've heard it now. Let it go. If they offend you, let it go. If they hurt your feelings, let it go. When I first heard that years ago, it was a breath of fresh air because it was the answer to a prayer, a problem, a situation that I was having. And I thought, oh God, yes, I'm going to let it go and I'm going to let God up until the point that it came down to do what I heard and I realized I had no idea how to let go. I would say, I forgive you, I release this, but that was, that, that was still there. The pain was still there. The nagging was still there. The bitterness was still fostering. The resentment was still bubbling. The thoughts in my mind were still perpetual. I was still having conversations with the individual in my mind about what happened. Imagining all kinds of things that I would say to them in the conversation and then filling in the gaps and how they would respond. <laughs> That is terrorizing and tormenting to the soul. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. I think the best solution is to follow the biblical principle in that, in that case, and that's to cast your care. If somebody offends you and you rebuke them and they don't accept the rebuke, they fight the rebuke, they don't take responsibility, they're not sensitive to your needs, they're not looking out in love, you can't do nothing with that person. But you've gotta do something with yourself. Take the incident and bring it to God and explain it to him, talk to him about it in detail. I do that. And as I do that, I receive peace. I feel a tremendous peace coming on me because that is how you let go of things. That's how you release things to God. It's through your words. It's through your mouth. Remember what Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, speaketh, <laughs> speaketh. <laughs> I forgive you, Klaus. Well, thank you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. <laughs> Forgive me. Allow me to compose myself. I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, bless God. How about we have a praise break right now and give him glory for he who enables man is great. <laughs> Amen. So, right, that's how you let go. That's how you release things. When you have weight on your heart and pain in your heart and issues that's tormenting you, you speak them out of your mouth to God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Release it to God in prayer. That's how you let go. When someone says, let go and let God, that's what you do. That was never explained to me. So I never knew how to do that. It always left me frustrating for quite some time until God began to teach me, just have a conversation. And God is so, so gentle. What he said to me was, tell me what happened. And I'm like, what? Tell you what happened? You were there. But I felt this gentle nudging, tell me all about what happened to you. And I did that. And there was peace. And I learned from that day 
that it was okay for me to reveal my heart to God. It was okay for me to use strong language. Let me qualify that. There was an issue with a brother that I had many, many years ago, and I felt a strong hatred. And I confess that, God, I hate this person. What I really want to do is choke them. I'm talking to my father and I'm casting my care. I'm speaking out of the abundance of the heart. And that's what was on my heart. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I gave. And when I said that and released that, instead of being reprimanded for not walking in love, I felt this tremendous peace come over me. And it startled me because I was expecting rebuke. I was expecting a strong, some strong words of, of, of reprimand, like you're supposed to be doing this. But there was peace. And I learned that I can talk to my father about what ails me. So when you have an issue with a brother or sister and you bring it to them and they dismiss you, take it to God. Let go and let God deal with it. Release it through prayer. Cast your cares through your words towards your father. Now, the scripture goes on to say to forgive them if they repent. If they do that over and over again, after a while, it's going to get hard to forgive. Like, bro, you did it again. Oh, man, my bad. Forgive me. We're like, man, sooner or later, you're a human being, man. You reach a point. We're like, man, I don't, I don't want to forgive you no more. Forgiveness runs out. I don't want to forgive you no more. I want to want to forgive you, but I don't want to forgive you. It's just not there. No desire. I'd be okay if we never spoke. I just don't want to. Well, sometimes we have to fight to forgive. We have to fight to let go. We've got to come to the throne one more time. God, I don't want to forgive that person. This is the 13th time that they did that. By now, they ought to know that this is a problem. They're totally disrespected. They're not thinking about me. I feel like they don't care. And now they want me to forgive them. I just rebuked them. They're like, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgive you. Well, now I've got a problem because now I don't want to forgive you. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I've rebuked them. I've made them aware, hey, you did it again, bruh. Again, for the 13th time. And they said, oh, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And now it's the ball's back in your hands. And you're like, well, <laughs> I ain't got no love for you. <laughs> ain't no more love for you. I've used all my love. This is where we need God. What I would suggest do is verbally say, hey, I forgive you. And you might totally not mean it in your heart. But in faith, you say, I forgive you. And now you take your heart to God and you may have to you may have to go through a process. Forgiveness might be a journey for you at this point. Does it seem fair that after you go through all of that and then come back to them, you forgive them and then. A week later, they trespass against you again, over and over. And after a while, it seems to get harder and harder. After a while, the journey gets longer and longer. Well, I think that our responsibility is to continuously come to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You might need some cool down time before you can even come to the throne. It might be a journey. You might not feel in your heart that you've forgiven them. There might still be turmoil there. Might be there for weeks. Might be there for months. In my case, I've experienced it for years. Though I've prayed, Father, I forgive them over and over again. God, I forgive them. God, I let it go. I'd have to explain all over again why it hurt, what hurt, how they did it, what happened. And it took years because the pain that I felt was that deep. And there's a couple of times that I felt foolish and weak. 
And I was hard on myself. Well, Dag, yo, how weak are you? Why is this still hurting you? Man, it did. And I had to let, I had to continue. I had to fight to forgive. And some of you might have to fight to forgive. Some of you may have already fought to forgive. And now you have nothing left in you. God is going to have to raise you up and give you the ability and the strength to take another step in that journey of forgiveness. I think, in my opinion, as long as you are striving, even if your striving means sitting here and waiting for a few till I can collect myself, if your heart is pitched towards forgiving, then I feel like God is with you. God's going to help you. And even if it's not, if you want to want to forgive, if you want to do the right thing, but you don't want to do the right thing, I believe that God will help you and give you grace as long as you communicate with him. And then even if you don't, God is so good that he can still keep you and put you on that journey. The scripture continues to say, but if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. That's why forgiveness is important. And if you forgive somebody today, right now, and you don't feel like you've forgiven them, the pain is still there. The bitter, sour taste is still there. Well, it looks like you're going to have to go through a process of sorting through that and uprooting that in some focused prayer. But if you say, you know what, I forgive you, all the while you still feel these negative vibes, these feelings of bitterness and resentment, that sour taste in your mouth, when their face comes into your mind, you've begun the journey. And sometimes that journey takes some time. Don't feel like, well, I didn't forgive them because I still feel this. Well, if you said it, if you confessed it, you've taken the first step. Now continue in that. This is something that some of us, probably a lot of us, we've come to a place to where we're no longer able to do that. Some have been, some of us, some people have taken so much advantage of you that I can't forgive that person. I don't want to forgive that person. I understand that. With man, it's impossible. But again, with God, all things are possible. There's another scripture that says uh, in Zechariah 4, 6, then, answered and, then, ans then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Your power, your might, eventually it'll run out. And then you're going to need the spirit of God. And maybe... Just maybe God uses situations like this in some of our lives to exhaust us of our strength that we might learn to depend on him by, by him bringing us to a place to where we are not able to do it. We want to, we've tried, we can't because we've reached the limit of our power. This is where the power of God will take over for you. I hope that this discussion blessed you. I don't know that I have all the answers, but these are some principles that I've learned, some things that God has shown me in my life that I still have to practice today. Sometimes we just need a moment to step away and allow our hearts to settle down and our thoughts to collect and give God the time for His Spirit to work in our minds, to move on our hearts and to impact us and to influence us. Sometimes you just have to give grace a little bit of time to work. <laughs> We're some hard cases. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I know I'm a hard case. I can be hard-headed, hard-hearted, the things that I've been through, 
sometimes I just need to give God some time. I know I need to, you know what, God, I've prayed this. I just need to back up a little bit and give you room to work. Let grace work. Maybe you're like that. Anyways, grace be with you and peace from the Father. You know what? Let me pray for us right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for the things that you've taught me to help me apply your word and make it practical so that I can do what your word is telling me to do. I don't want to be in a place to where you won't forgive me because I have unforgiveness. I want to communicate that and transmit that to every listener. I pray that your spirit would begin to move on them and do a work of forgiveness. Father, that you would soften hearts where over the years they've been hardened with pain. Help us, Lord when we can't help ourselves, when we come to the place that we're no longer able to obey, yeah, we don't desire to do the right thing. Give us the desire. Let your grace meet us where we are weak because you said that your grace is sufficient for us and that your strength would be made perfect in our weakness. I'm asking for these things in Jesus' name. All glory to you. Well, peace be with you. I hope this blessed you. Let somebody else know about this video. And uh, live long and prosper in Jesus.